Happy post-Thanksgiving and welcome to the consumerist season, everyone. We're here for a double hitter week with Retsu Talk episode 13. Oh. I am here with my two new video game savvy pals, Chip Cheese Am and General Iron Man, Akus. Yeah, I just did that marathon. It was great. Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? I'm dead. <laughs> By marathon, you mean you rode a train? Yeah, yeah. For six whole hours. It was something. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to do a lot of training for that train? Uh, no, you, you basically just pay and they don't even look at your ticket. So uh, if anyone wants oh, okay. to blow up a train, not hard. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's been the podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodbye. Uh, never going to see us again. Oh. Um, yeah. And so uh, you're both Michigan natives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, how? Uh, let's talk sports for a second. Detroit Lions football, <laughs> uh, yearly tradition of losing on Thanksgiving, still continues to this day. Good to see that. Good to see Detroit staying consistent and strong. They were so close to winning, too. Did, did you they hear were. that? I think the cops just heard what I said about blowing up trains. Oh, no. Oh, like, oh well, I guess it's just us. Oh, yeah, I can hear that. Oh, okay. So how did Thanksgiving go? Do you have any awkward family conversations? Um, oh, I learned a lot about inseminating goats. Okay. Oh. Well, I had a depressing grandma over, so, um... <laughs> a a, a depressing that? grandma? Uh, a depressing grandma who... I, I have a grandma where the doc... Every year, a doctor says she doesn't have long to live, and then she lives for another year, and it's happened for six years in a row. She just fucking hates doctors. <laughs> I'll show you... She she lives in a home and she has Alzheimer's like pretty terribly and for some reason everybody had this great idea of let's take her out of the home and bring her here for Thanksgiving and it worked out somehow but she, she I honestly don't know how she's still alive I don't know if that sounds like mean but it's like her everything about her just feels like her entire being is just being held together with like tape. <laughs> Like, if you just breathe that or wrong, like, she just would fall into pieces. Happy Thanksgiving! Yeah, so that was fun. It was great. I could just imagine the, uh, the autopsy turning into an unboxing video. <laughs> There's a Wii U inside Grandma! Wow! <laughs> Man, how I long has it been I thought I had to wait in line forever! It's a deluxe set, even! Wow! Perfect! Well, it is a yearly Southern tradition for Thanksgiving where you, you listen to your family uh, bitch about Democrats. Mm. Yes, uh, ever since 2008 when uh, Barack Obama was elected office, I've had to endure my uncle and my dad bitching about him. I imagine for... this year would have been worse than most. Oh, yes, yes, oh, absolutely. It happened pretty quickly, but my uh, uncle and dad were on the other side of the table. There's this kind of awkward period where they were the only people talking. Me and my brother-in-law and my sister were just kind of like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was basically ta- they were basically talking about how the country is destined to become a dystopian wasteland in the next four years. All right. So they looked out their window. And, they uh, called 51% of the country basically morons. That was his margin of the popular vote. And uh, yeah, it was a fun time. Hmm. Yeah. Also, lots of babies. It's, it's really easy yeah. to imagine the country's becoming a dystopian wasteland every November. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it will become a dystopian wasteland on December 21st. The end of the world is going to come pretty soon. Man. So, Chip, get some enjoyment out of that Wii U while you still can. <laughs> yeah. I won't even be able to play all the games that come out in February. You have less than a month to frolic in Nintendo Land. And buy that Nintendo Land merch. Pikmin 3 is the force that will hold back Armageddon. Mm. Everybody wants to play Man. If you if you guys were to envision the end of the world, what would be your preferred way for the end to come about? What's your kind of ideal apocalypse? Mm. As contradictory as that term is. <laughs> mm. uh, super volcano. I, I want Yellowstone to explode. Mm. Yeah, see, I kind of had the same idea, because for me, in any kind of apocalyptic scenario where there were a small number of survivors, I, with my condition, would not last very long <laughs> unless I were able to, you know, hole up in a pharmacy somewhere. So I'm thinking the ideal way to end the world would just be a big fireball, really quick, everyone dies, leaving scorched earth and nothing, you know, except whatever lives underground. Your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So those 51% of Americans would still survive, those subterranean mold men idiots. Yes. 
Yes, that would be my uncle's preferred end of the world would be for a so very selective apocalypse targeting socially progressive people. So the rapture. That's what he's at. <laughs> yes, the rapture. <laughs> More or less. Speaking of uncles, they're kind of crazy. We have two of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know where this is going. All right. Yeah, so I, I, there's, I have two crazy uncles. I actually haven't, Ironicus is really familiar with one of them because I post his Facebook statuses like all the time because they're always <laughs> insane. Um, but like you retweet his Facebook status? You, uh, I just post them like Skype. Your family get along with them, basically. Oh. That's all we yeah. really need to say. Um, what's really funny though, because like, he was really upset when Obama won the first time and he was, I'm assuming incredibly upset that Obama won this year too, but the thing is, he was tweeting so much stuff right bef- like the day of the election, and like that e- ever since Obama has won, he hasn't said a single thing on Facebook, and I'm, I'm like worried. <laughs> Did he kill himself? No, <laughs> no. It, like he's called he he's called my house a couple times, talking to my dad, and my dad says that he just sounds like a basket case now. And I'm worrying that he's like making a stockpile of weapons or something. Is he, is he trying to get your family on a boat to Somalia, the last <laughs> safe country in the world? <laughs> Oh god! But I have, I have another uncle that's on. No, my they're mom's. going to make sure we get health care when we're sick. Run away! Oh god! You should be careful because there was a guy in Tampa who killed himself because Obama got reelected. Yes. Yeah. There's also somebody in Florida who got shot for taking someone else's parking space on Friday. So. Mm-hmm. And their names were both Uncle Cheesem. That's, no, <laughs> that's the state to be. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, end of the world is nigh. So, enjoy that. Yeah. Be a limited number of podcasts available until then. We'll be playing all your favorite hits from now until we all die screaming. All right. And here's one from Joni Mitchell. So, what's on your guys' Christmas wish list this year? What are you looking to get? Um, Pikmin 3. Advanced copy. Well, <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, yeah. I can't really get it as a present, but I love to live in my own place. Like, now. Oh, I mean, I love my family. It's just like by now, it's like I it's I was just sitting like a month ago. I was just like staring at the wall. It's like wow, I should move out. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> yeah. uh, everybody keeps asking me that, you know, seeing my family. But uh, I'm just telling them all, don't get me anything. Save it for like the wedding registry, and they say no. And what? I'm like, okay, they s- no. <laughs> Like, they don't believe you're getting married? <laughs> well, no, so they, they want to get something work. for the registry Come and on. something at Christmas. They want to be super generous. I'm like, okay, just save oh. up. Like, we're, we're registering for a honeymoon? We'd be like, that's expensive. You can pay for that if you want to buy us anything. Where's the honeymoon? Buy me plane tickets. Uh, we're going to Florida, of all places. So hmm. um, hopefully don't have to get in too many crowded parking lots. Orlando, Miami. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna go hit up all the Orlando resorts. Yes. Oh, nice. We're doing so the nice. Disney thing. We're that sort of sickeningly sweet. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. I've never been. Oh, never. Nope. Neither have I. So that's gonna change about a year from now. Actually, we're planning to go in the fall when it cools off, because mm. you know it will be sticky and gross and really, really crowded otherwise. Yeah. Try to plan, because there there's a site you can look at that projects the crowds at each park in Disney. Oh, that's cool. What is that huh. called? Yeah. I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I will okay. send it to you well, later. Well, if you think of it within the next 12 months, let me know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've got time. The world's going to be over by then anyway. Ah, damn it. You're going to get married in a wooden shack in the middle of the woods, surrounded by zombies or fire, or however the world's going to end. I just decorated a Christmas tree and there won't even be a Christmas? Is that what you're telling me? That is what I'm telling you. Well, you know, uh, if Obama makes it earlier... <laughs> <laughs> Obama! Damn it! And I have a niece and her birthday is on the rapture. <gasps> Yeesh. Thanks a lot, niece. She's actually really nice, though. Hmm. <laughs> And it's too bad she she bears the mark of It's too Satan. bad she's the harbinger of death and yeah. destruction and decay for the entire Earth, but she's quite sweet otherwise. All right. Yeah, she can say hi and wave at you. On, on the 21st, she will be turning six. Six, six. <gasps> oh, my God. I never thought of it this way. 
And what if she was born at six o'clock? <gasps> So anyway, back to inseminating goats. This really was just <laughs> the best thing that happened to me, all things. That today. was really why we started this podcast <laughs> in the first place, was to hear about your inseminating well, my, my goat aunt, story. My aunt, she lives out she lives out near Chelsea on this big old bit of land. They're sort of making a farm, but like it's more of a petting zoo, really. They've got mm. a pair of goats, three ducks, and way too many chickens. And they're all new. This is the first time anyone's seen them. And apparently uh, if if you want to uh, breed your standard poodle, it will cost you fifteen hundred dollars in stud fees. If you want to breed a goat, thirty five bucks shipping included. <laughs> oh, goats are cheap dates, and uh, they don't actually send you a goat for your goat. They just send you a, a test tube of the necessary materials. What? And you just got to figure out how to get. The goat spunk into your lady goat. So they send you the goat spunk. Yes. Well, you load it like in a cock gun, right? <laughs> yeah, I was saying... Or like a cock gun? Because it's spunk. What? We are yeah. trying to figure out uh, what to get them for Christmas, so I just said we should just get, you know, a turkey baster for my aunt, and uh, she'll be good to go. Who, who jerked off the goat? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. And how much do they get paid? So this only costs 35 dollars. Is this hourly? Does he have to, like, make up for, like, volume of goats? These hands in this loop are worth at least 35 bucks, son. Don't they have, like, robots to do this now? Imagine being the goat if it's a robot. <laughs> I mean, it would have to be a robot that's sexy to a goat, right? <laughs> so it's made of tin cans and sweaters? <laughs> I would assume so. Really high failure rate with those robots. Also, uh, the three ducks are named Ping the Duck... Pong and Paddle. Pong and Paddle? Yeah. Were they fans of early video games? <laughs> well, I guess there's a children's story called Ping the Duck, and Paddle the Duck is such a great name for a duck, so they just sort of bridged it and made a set with the names. Right. I'm sorry, how's this related to jerking goats off? Oh, uh, well, they're about ten feet away. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the ducks like to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sick ducks. Well, speaking of goat spunk, the, the Wii U came out recently, <laughs> and uh, Chip, you did pick that up. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, as an early adopter of the Wii U, what are your initial thoughts on this new on this new console <gasps> to welcome in the new generation? Well, and for the most part, I, I actually like it more than I was expecting. Like, like Nintendo's been really bad with the internet online community stuff, like, until now... Hey, do you want to exchange friend codes after this? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, let me clear half an hour off my schedule, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on my, you know, memory skills, so if you can just, you know, tell this to me later, I should... I can memorize that. pi to 100 digits, but I don't know my friend code. <laughs> well, <laughs> so difficult. Well, the Wii U finally got rid of friend codes. They were kind of gone in the 3DS, too, sort of. Um, but... The, the online community stuff on the Wii U is actually, like, good for the most part. Oh, oh so it works, works like iPhones. If you slap Wii U's together, you both have your friend codes? Yeah, it's, it's just like Xbox Live, really. You just send a friend invite. And, oh. Yeah. Um, it's kind of different from the other consoles because there's, like, a whole... There's, like, the... They call it the Miiverse, and it's just, like, a big old message board. And it's divided into, like, the different games, and you can actually just post... You can, like, while you're playing the game, just press a button, and then post directly into the message board for that game. And other people can reply. And you can also put, like, drawings on there, and you can even mark stuff for spoilers, and it actually works. And it's, it's like, really heavily mo moderated, because I have not seen a single penis drawing so far. Uh, mm. And that's, like, a miracle. So who moderates those? Is it, is it the same people who jerk off the goats, or how does that work? You gotta uh, kill I time think. somehow. Yeah, and, I figured so. I mean, they still have one hand free, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can double dip. <laughs> but they they kind of mess one thing up, though, with the Wii U, because one thing that was like a big problem with the Wii is, you know, they had like the virtual console and all that, and if you bought a game, it was tied to the system, so if it broke, you lost the game. Oh. Unl unless you actually... Sent did it. Change that. That's still that. 
Well, they added... Because there, there's, like, no accounts or anything for the Wii. And on the Wii U, it's like, hey, now you can register separate accounts and all this. And it's like, cool. And it's like, hey, the things you buy are tied to your account. All right. Hey, the account that your things are tied to are tied to your console. So it's just the same thing. Although I guess now they made it easier because now it's just like, if it breaks or something, you just tell Nintendo, hey, all my stuff that was on my account is gone. And then they, they, they just give it back to you. It's still an extra step that doesn't need to be there, though. You should just be able to log in on whatever Wii U and just download everything. But you can't. So how about the games? So is Nintendo Land, I've heard about that at E3, is that something that came with it? And then I'm guessing you got the Mario game? If you buy the deluxe set, which has a bigger hard drive, yeah, Nintendo Land comes with it. Um, and then the other one I got was New Super Mario Bros. U, which... Sure. I mean, it's just a side-scrolling Mario game, but it's actually pretty fun. Um, it's still pretty easy so far. But high def. High def. Yeah. It does look n nice, though. Even if it mm -hmm. does kind of have, like, the plasticky look all the other Super Mario Brothers have had recently. Right. Um, so is it one of those things where it's easy to get through, hard to complete? Like, are you, is it got sort of a collectible system, like, a? Uh, in Super Mario Brothers Wii, not you. Yeah, I remember the first Super Mario Brothers Wii. Um, you know, had those coins you could collect. Yeah, and yeah. They like the game itself was pretty easy, but collecting all those coins and unlocking the secret worlds was kind of hard. Yeah, they still have the coins, and getting all of them and being the game, I think, unlocks a Rainbow Road, like in Super Mario World. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet, but um, there are a lot. They added a lot of things to the levels that were kind of missing in the other new Super Mario Brothers. Like their actual like secrets in the levels now. Like some of the levels have secret exits that take you to new levels. It's been so long. Yeah, that's very Super Mario Worldy. Yeah. Uh, so I found two secret ex exits, and it's like let me skip a couple of worlds. So now I'm like halfway through the game. Um, yeah, and it's pretty good. They have. Yoshi in there, but they don't use them much. They're really into, like, putting baby Yoshis in the levels now. They're, like, all, like, little gimmicky baby Yoshis. Like, one of them glows, and so you have to carry this fat-ass little gold Yoshi through dark levels that you can't see shit in. So it doesn't work like in Mario World, where you feed it, like, five times, it turns into a big Yoshi? There are these pink ones that you can feed, and then they grow, like, wings or something. And then you can just use it to fly over the entire level. Oh, uh, yes. Red Bull Yoshis, they call them. Yeah. This game uses the Miiverse, too, and it's kind of interesting, because it's like, if you beat a level, and you beat it in, like, a specific way, like, if you don't take any damage, or you beat it really fast, or you get all the coins, they'll ask you, like, do you want to write a post about this level? And then, like, you post it, and it comes up either either in the Miiverse, or, like, um, if you turn it on in the game, like, everybody else's posts will, like, appear above levels, and all that. It's kind of interesting, because sometimes people... Uh, like Can you post, like, that. really uh, cryptic and depressing, like, existential messages? Like, no one really understands you. <laughs> you could, yeah, as long as it's, like, less than 100 characters long. And as long as it doesn't have any penis drawings. Right, yeah. If You you may beat this level, but it will not be fulfilling. Mm. You may beat this level, but the world is going to end in a matter of weeks. And everyone you know and love will be dead. Well... Wahoo! Can anyone so really love you because they don't have the same... Uh, experience this reference that you do. You're truly alone in the world. I guess I'll keep feeding this Yoshi. I'll just keep feeding the Yoshi and maybe it'll be happy for me. I'll live vicariously through this Yoshi's life. Yoshi can never be an avatar for happiness. Yoshi's a symbol of despair. No. No, Yoshi just eats fruit. How's the whole iPad controller thing that it has? Is it I heard it's heavy. I heard it's not so bad. It's not too obtrusive. Does it work decent? Yeah, the screen is pretty nice. It's it's just a normal capacitive touch screen. So it's you know you can't do like multi touch like an iPads, which also means it feels a little slightly less responsive than those type of touch screens. Um, sure. Like, it has a... St you can still use your fingers, but it came with a stylus anyway. It's, I mean, you, you don't have a very wide library, but from the two games you have, have you seen any really interesting uses? Well, Nintendo Land, I know, uses the screen in some interesting ways, but again, I haven't played that one yet, because it's mostly right. a multiplayer party game. Um, 
what New Super Mario Brothers does is just it's just um, I mean it's just a second screen, so you don't have to actually like you know use your television. You can just play it away right. from the console, and like that works really well actually. Did, did did you do a length a distance test? How far I did. can you? <laughs> it's actually um, like inside my own house, it will lose signal from the Wii U at a point, but it's um, it doesn't really seem to be distance of the problem. It's like how many objects are in between the Wii U. <laughs> um, be- so you have to be like depressing grandma, get out of the way. Yeah, God, uh, you're on. just like a lump, and you're getting right in the way my Wii U signal. Um. So it's like, I can bring it into the kitchen, and then the fridge fucks it all up. <laughs> if I stand right next to the fridge. But if I'm all the way down the basement, it's completely fine. But if Depressing Grandma were to use the touch screen, say, isn't there something in Mario U where you can make platforms appear if you're yeah. holding that tablet? Yeah, it's like one of the multiplayer things I haven't really touched yet. Um, but yeah, you can have like a second player who makes temporary platforms and all that, and it makes some sections actually a lot easier. Because you can have, like, four platforms up to a time, but then they disappear, like, the instant you jump off them. Um, there's something else that's, like, boost mode or something? I don't know how exactly that works, but some somebody else fucks with the touchscreen and, like, speeds up the level really fast. And people no, have, that, like, that's catch boost up. mobile. It's a tie-in, sort of um, cross-promotion. Mm. Ah, right, right. Couldn't you use that to dick each other over, though? Just make platforms if someone's trying to jump? And Yeah, you could. I don't know if you people. played New Super Mario Bros. Wii. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the mission statement of the game, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are there any other games on the horizon that are... Because, you know, I'm not getting a Wii because none of the launch games look particularly appealing to me. Right. right. So, um, is there anything coming up that... Yeah, I'm kind of interested in if they can make anything neat out of the whole control scheme they have that, set up for uh, it. There's a platinum game with the sort of superhero almost... Oh, what is that called? Magnificent 101, maybe? Project 100? Something with 100 or 100. It was originally a project, and then it had an actual name. Oh, okay. Like Magnificent oh, that 101. That looks cool. Yeah, it's the Magnificent 101. Yeah, there's that in uh, Bayonetta 2. Uh, there's that Rayman game. Oh, yeah. Um, that was supposed oh, to be a launch yeah. title, but then they pushed it back to early next year. Um, that looks pretty good, because the previous Rayman game, Rayman Origins or whatever, was really good. Um, although I guess a reason why it might have been pushed back is because um, there were like Wii U tablet specific levels where it's like you weren't directly controlling Rayman, he was like AI controlled, and instead you were building the platforms and stuff to, for him to move across. That sounds so fun. But the problem was, it's like it turned out too much of the game was that, and people started <laughs> complaining, so it's like, oh no, so mm-hmm. they're like making more levels where you're directly in control of him or something. Um, obviously there's Pikmin 3 that's early next year, and, oh, there's, like, one other, I can't remember exactly what it was. There's Zombie Just U. Just Dance 7. Yeah, Just Dance 7. Uh, mm-hmm. I figured that was it. Yeah, you dance right on top of the tablet. Um. Finally. It's, it's mostly for the, uh, the Chinese audience with the very small feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> there's Zombie U out at the moment, which is kind of a dumb name, but... That looks really interesting, but I'm not hearing good things. Is well, it... the problem, it's been getting, like, mediocre and sometimes bad reviews, but from the reviews I've read, it's like all the reviewers were expecting a different game and got upset when it wasn't that. Because it was it was like everybody was just expecting a first-person shooter action zombie game, and it plays more like a roguelike in first person. Right. Well, that's exactly what I thought was interesting about it, taking those yeah. roguelike features out of the like turn-based grid dungeon delve thing that they're mm-hmm. always used in. Yeah, I'm actually kind of interested in getting that now, because I've heard some other people who've actually played it talk about it, and they made it sound a lot more interesting than re- the reviews did. Because um, it actually has some ideas like from uh, Demon's Souls crib from it. Oh. Because um, like, there's you only have one life, so when you die, you play as an entirely different person after that. Um, and, like, when you die, you lose all your items. But you can find your previous person as a zombie, and if you can kill them, you can get your items back. Um, but it's like, if your zombies will appear in other people's games, and you can also leave messages, like, sprayed on walls and floors and That's stuff, like in cool. Demon's Souls. That That's very cool. Demon's Souls. Um, and then you have to, obviously, like, you have... Um, you can only look at your inventory... Th- through the, the, the tablet, 
and it doesn't pause the game, so you're like entirely vulnerable through that, which was kind of interesting. And then you have like a scanner, kind of like from a the movie Alien, and you have to use that. But you have to like actually put your tablet up to your TV because I guess it can actually sync uses this sensor bar or whatever. Um, and it detects zombies for you and all this other shit, but also picks up like mice and stuff, so you don't actually know if there's zombies around. But if you want to be sure, you can just call up your friend Octo G one two three and uh, mm -hmm. he'll give you the hookup. No, oh, yeah, get on the Meverse. <laughs> Assume you got those friend codes. Mm. But yeah, the actual tablet is nice. It doesn't feel like I was. It's a lot lighter than I thought, but it has enough weight to keep it from like feeling cheap. Does it come with a lot of like uh, built-in non-game like applications? Like, can you just doodle on it? Is it fun to doodle? Yeah, well, I mean, there's not, there isn't any like separate app that's just drawing. But like on the Meverse, that's what lots of people have been using it for is to just post mm -hmm. drawings, and there are actually like a lot of good drawings on there, which is surprising. Mm. Um, but none of dicks. Right, it's amazing. Also, like no Reddit memes or anything. Which was oh, they it. moderate those out too? Yeah, the, the, oh, I, awesome. I saw yeah. one. This is I, why Nintendo's my favorite company in gaming. <laughs> Finally. They were really strict with like even shitty memes and stuff, because there was one of those awful like fry take all my money things, and it was gone in like three seconds. It was like BAM Vaporized. No creatively bankrupt people on my review. <laughs> now play the new So Super I guess Mario I'm Brothers. never buying one great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they at if at some point there is like just a separate drawing thing. Like, um, there's one for the 3DS. It's actually a really nice like painting app. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's on here. There's lots of video streaming stuff on this. That's cool. Um, that little webcam on it, so you can point the tablet at yourself and like vodcast yourself playing a Wii game, Wii U game. Yeah. Um, there's like Perfect. a video chat thing. I haven't tried it out yet, but people so what are you're saying, saying is well. the, the Let's Play subform is obsolete. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, see you guys. Uh, this is going to be the last Retsu Talk. Uh, it was nice it's impossible you. to LP a Wii U game. Impossible? Well, I mean, if you have to show the second screen, you'd have to have, like, a scare cam of the screen in there. Well, you, you just... Well, I think you just answered your own question. Yeah, you mm. just do something like the Giga Quad. Get video out from your console and your uh, tablet. I guess a better question is, can you sneak your own face into that scare cam and show yourself reacting to yourself pushing the tablet buttons? <laughs> Maybe. I think it can happen. I want to see a prototype video. But inside that mm. scare cam, you just put a, an even smaller thumbnail of the main screen and do, like, a, a never-ending <laughs> hallway effect. I don't know where to look! <laughs> and within that scare cam, you have another scare cam showing some incoming tweets with the hashtag you've made for the particular stream you're working oh. on for that video. And one for Weep, uh, Weavers. Weavers. Yeah, oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. Finally. Finally. Thank you. I think we've got this thing figured out, man. <laughs> I think we just found our next Chip Y video. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get right on it. So speaking of that, you guys have been doing some themed Retsu Prey type stuff yeah, within yeah. recent times. We already talked about, well, last time I was here, we talked about the animes a bit. And that's over. At least for mm -hmm. now. Like, that was a, that was a No More Heroes hit, the only thing. Yeah, people are sad to see mm -hmm. it go. People like seeing anime be made fun of. I'm a little sad to see it go, too. It was fun. But, I mean, it's time to take a break before it gets stale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let Japan make more terrible stuff. Right, oh, you gotta wait for them to release that console war as ancient Japan war anime or whatever the hell. Oh, the main character is like a blue-haired anime guy, and he's supposed to represent Sonic. What? Oh what yeah, that? yeah. I don't know. I don't know much about it. You'd have to ask like Zorak. This is one hundred percent not made up. <laughs> it is an actual anime that it's it's like an ancient Japanese period like war. With real, with just like normal human people, but it's supposed to be like, like disguised as the console wars, and all the people are supposed to represent different game systems or game characters. The main character is just this generic looking blue haired anime guy, and he's supposed to be representing Sonic. Uh, yeah. Sold. Mm hmm. So now you guys are doing Blip Theater? Yeah. I keep calling it blip.rp, but that's not how it's listed on the website, so I guess it's not official. I want to call it that, but then it's like, well, there's one theater thing, might as well make it consistent. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why you get paid the big bucks. Oh, yeah. 
So basically you find blip videos, make fun of them? Yeah. So, and instead of YouTube? Yeah. That's the idea? Uh, it's an idea that we came up with when we were doing uh, the Uncharted 2 thread, where we sort of had this running theme of, like, it's when monetization was first getting really big, and we thought that was weird, and some people weren't doing a very good job of it, and it's just a weird thing to see uh, the whole Let's Play thing do. Right. And, but... Blip has so much other terrible stuff in so many other genres mm -hmm. <laughs> that we just spread out from beyond gaming to like drama and science fiction. And I really want to do a workout video because no matter oh, yeah. where it's hosted, <laughs> workout videos, they say the dumbest stuff. That's, that's one of the sections I haven't looked at yet. Fitness. It's going to be great. So what are some examples of things that you found so far on Blip? Um, well, we recorded one that I haven't, I've edited it, but I haven't put it up yet. Um, It'll be erased. Like it's uploaded first. <laughs> I was looking through some of the categories that I, I wasn't really expecting to find anything strange or like awful in, so I went to like the how-to category. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna... This, yes, this one is good. And, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember... It's, it's called, called iHandy. <laughs> yeah, for iHandy.com. And it's like all these different how-to videos uh, and with ladies, but they're all like in lingerie. And it's just supposed to be, like, you know, you're supposed to get all titillated while they're showing you how to, like, change the batteries in your remote or whatever the hell. And it's got a voiceover <laughs> with this woman with, like, this breathy phone sex voice. Yeah. Talking about how to properly change the bolt with a lug wrench. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, a lot of them were just, like, really simple, duh things, and obviously you're just there to look at the lady, but then... But I was just there, trying to... There's I went, one. This one. Yeah. I, how to prevent uh, steamed windows when you're taking a shower. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I've never figured that out. I need to look that up. But I was just trying to see if there were any, like, really strange ones. And I found two. One that's kind of Let's Play related. And the, but the first one we did, it was... Um, I have to look it up now so I know exactly what she was about. How to build a Cyclorama Photo Studio. <laughs> And this is like a whole weekend project with power tools and belt sanders. Yeah, so it's... First of all, I didn't know what the hell a Fotorama, Psychorama, whatever the hell studio was. And it's only five minutes long, but it's like a project that would take a solid week. And, <laughs> like, this lady is in this crazy lingerie, and, like, the whole time she's, like, operating, like, circular saws and sitting on unsanded wood... <laughs> And, like, <laughs> nailing all this shit together, and it's like, it just kind of glosses over all the steps. Like, oh yeah, you know how to do this, right? And then at the end, it's like, oh, this project took about uh, $1,500 to make. The one thing I kept coming back to is, did they find someone who was handy and teach her to be an underwear model, or did they find an underwear model and teach her to be handy? She looked like I, she knew how to use a circular saw. She knew her way around that saw. Enough mm -hmm. to know that she, for her to know that she was not properly dressed for the job. <laughs> she knew her way around it, around it enough to say, you know how to do this, right? Yeah. And skipped all the steps. Oh, it was this really sweet, like, clubbing music in the background the whole time she was doing it, too. It was really intense. <laughs> and then we did it back-to-back -back with a video where a girl just plugs chords into a box. <laughs> yeah, it was a, how, how to record uh, gameplay footage off your Xbox. And she just has an HD PVR, and she just plugs in some cables, and that's it. <laughs> so you see the whole breadth of eye handy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've done um, about three uh, different sci-fi sci series yeah, with varying of levels of animation and live action. We've done a zombie sci-fi series on a blip exclusive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, High budget? No. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two of them were animated. One was live action. The live action one was the one that looked the best because they had like makeup, but it was still really low budget. They had makeup. <laughs> they had makeup, yeah. Then there are uh, two we did of uh, web reviewers. One that's been uploaded so far, oh, not yet. God! Oh. And they're both so bad. Oh, are we talking God. like derivative web reviewers? <sighs> yeah. I wish. <laughs> well, because I haven't really looked at the video game category yet, because I know there's going to be, that's like where most of the awful easily easy to make fun of stuff would be in. Mm -hmm. That's our wheelhouse, you know, we got we got experience there. Yeah, I wanna like look for different stuff that you know, to make it different from like normal Red Supreme videos or whatever, but um 
Oh my god, this last one we did was just some kid reviewing some random, like, shoot 'em up Xbox Live arcade game. But his whole gimmick. Which was originally was, for the N64. Like. Yeah, it was like. I can't remember what it was called. People like, should have made up their something. mind about this game by now, is what I'm saying. <laughs> we don't need him. And. But his whole gimmick was that it wasn't him reviewing, it was puppets. But it was just, like, a dragon puppet he had, and then there was, like, a wolf puppet. And it was just the most, like, soul-draining video to terrible watch. Terrible voices, terrible characters, I guess you could say <laughs> they were. So it was a puppet show? It was a puppet show It was a puppet show. an Xbox Live Arcade game. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> so if you want some of that... <laughs> Yeah, you don't. I, you don't want I'm, any. Of that. I'm dreading to edit that video because at first it's like, oh god, do I even want to put this video up? Because it's like, no matter how many jokes we can put on that video, it's going to be bad no matter what. It, yeah, we've I've, been there. I think he's the worst reviewer on the entire internet. We have to put it up. Just really, j- yes. Yeah. No, that's lie. a bold statement. No of joke. Out of everything we, every reviewer we've made fun of, like including the guy who like fought inanimate gumball machines in his own room and he was like a grown ass man and everything. <laughs> that was just bad for being really, really derivative. Yeah. Which is sad when fighting gumball machines is not unique. <laughs> oh. Classic trope. But yes. This is all for, part of your Peace Walker thread? For I'm people assuming? who all mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's it's my contribution to the Peace Walker thread because I'm not mm-hmm. in it. Proper. Yeah. LPForum.com slash something awful slash uh, peacewalker.org, I think is the address. Dot co dot uk. Dot co dot uk slash. Um, uh, oh, be sure it's the HTTPS. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, dot backslash backslash? One backslash. Uh, one, black, yeah. one backslash. Not a forward slash. Or I think it's like backslash forward slash. Take two lefts after the root directory. If you hit the old silo, you went too far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go to your command prompt, hit let us play Chip Cheese and Peace Walker, and that should get you there. So there was one other thing to address. Chip, this is a situation you went through yeah. fairly recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw this on your Twitter not too long ago, and I felt like I had to ask you some more details about this. You yeah. had a, uh, a fan situation, as it were. A situation. A we situation. had a situation. A fan. That's it all started when I saw Ironicus tweet something that I was really confused about. Uh, I don't, what was it? You said something about, like, hey, this asshole calls uh, family members to call, to, to get the phone numbers of your friends, and that's weird. And I was like, huh? And then Chip tweeted something like, hey, I went through something weird recently. Um, well, my house gets phone calls from, like, really strange numbers all the time, and it's almost always solicitors. Like, it has a weird extension all this shit. And we got a call, like, really late at night, like, 9.30 or 10, and I had this weird-ass extension. It, was, it had, like, a 3 before the area code, and it was no... <laughs> a 3? Yeah, it was, like, 3 dash area code. It will be explained shortly. So that came from outside the solar system. Uh, yeah, um... Let's play Super Mario Galaxy 2 coming soon to a oh, sub form near you. <laughs> oh. And my dad answered the phone, and it was some. My dad said it was just some guy with kind of a weird accent. And so, when my dad. My dad did what he usually does, and he just fucks around with them like it was a telemarketer or something. <laughs> my dad does this awful thing where he talks like an Indian man or something, and then he starts speaking in Klingon until they hang up. If anyone's um, wondering, his dad is a little racist. <laughs> a little bit. More like a little awesome. <laughs> really awesome, little racist. But the guy, like... Well, my dad usually does this with telemarketers. You know, they hang up pretty fast because they get that he's just fucking with them. And But this guy didn't. He was on the phone with my dad for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and he was... <laughs> he was asked, like, this guy, you know, called, and then he asked for me, like, my, my real name. And... So my dad said, no, there's nobody who lives here like that, but I have a dog with that name. And then the guy got really confused because there was a dog with the name that he was of me. And 
the guy wouldn't hang up, and he just kept asking, and then my dad was, like, asking for his name, and he said his name was Zach, followed by a last name that was my last name with one letter that was different. <laughs> what? Yeah, he just took my last name, took the T out, replaced it with an, e- an L, and it was really confusing. And the guy, he was asking where the guy was from, and he's like, oh, I'm from France. And my dad didn't believe him. Uh, and so eventually the guy just, he's French like, okay, people can't speak English? What is this? <laughs> so, uh, eventually the guy said, okay, sorry for bugging you, and he hung up. And then five minutes later he called again, because he thought he had, maybe he had the wrong number or something, so he was just redialing the number, but no, he had the right number. And he continued to talk with my dad some more, he kept asking if I was there. And he called a total of... Five? Five, five times. times. He called five times. He called... We answered the first three times. <laughs> and then he called once while we were talking to somebody else. And But the weird thing was, like, after the first three calls, the phone number changed to a, a, a phone line from California. But it was the same dude. Oh, yeah, sneaky. Hey. Yeah. And so we were trying to, like, look up his number, and we couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, the, the, one, the first one that was apparently from France, but... You could find the other one. It was from Big Bear County, California. That's a real county? Yeah, Big Bear yeah, County. You don't want to live in Little Bear. That's just creepy. So, he didn't call after that, but I thought that was kind of weird that there was somebody calling for me. And he also knew my parents' names. They knew that they lived there. Um, and I remember earlier in the day, there was some... Because there was, I can recognize some people who tweet at me a whole bunch, and there was this one guy who's tweeted to me a couple times in the last couple of weeks... And I remember he tweeted at me earlier in the day asking if I could have a Skype call with him because that would, he thought that would just be nice. He would really appreciate it. And I didn't answer because I usually don't just answer requests like that from people I don't know. Sure. Um, and I was like, wait, somebody asked to like talk with me earlier in the day. So I just tried to look for it and then the tweet was deleted. Uh, and so then I was like immediately suspicious of this guy. So that, then I just started like doing e-detective work on the guy. And it only took like half an hour to find his real name and all this, and it turned out he was from France and all this. But I was like, okay, but I can't really link that to him because I can't get his phone number or anything. But then I got private messages on two of my accounts. One one was a Let's Play account, one was my personal YouTube account. And I um, oh shit, I think I saved the messages actually. <laughs> I I uh, let's read even, them. Yeah, right now. Let's, let's uh, find them. I have a podcast it out to the masses. While you're uh, while you're looking that up, I, I would like to say that my tweets were a bit more eloquent when I sort of broke this story the next morning by shaming the dude publicly. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Hey, everybody, this dude is a total creep who calls people's grandmas to stalk them over the internet. Fuck you, buddy. That yeah, That's that it. word for word what happened. Mm-hmm. I actually saved a bunch of shit in this guy just in case he ever bugs me again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I have a special folder and it's just called Fuck You, followed by his name. <laughs> but he sent me this private message that says, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, and the reason I'm prefacing my message with this is because it's kind of understandable you would. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> your chip... <laughs> like, he knows this is over the line. Like, grandmas are off limits. Can I just propose yeah. that as a rule? Like... I know I'm kind of an idiot, but... <laughs> oh yeah, so before I even got this message, my... Grand, uh, my grandma called because he called my grandma first because he couldn't figure out my phone number, but he somehow figured out my grandma's number. So he called her up and then said, hey, I'm a friend of Chip Cheesum's. Can I have his number? And she gave it to him because she thought he was a friend of mine. Uh, yeah. But anyways, gross. the rest of this message goes, you're followed by my real name, right? Phone number, my real, no- real phone number. And you live in... I have a couple of addresses... I was just wondering, <laughs> I have a couple of addresses. Part. I was just wondering if you'd mind having a conversation with me. You can call me at phone number, which was the phone number from Big Bear County. I have to tell you something, and it has to be over the phone. It's kind of important, and I think you just ignore me otherwise. What? I'm not going to say something stupid like, I'll release your information if you don't. Her, her, I'm evil, because I won't. So no worries about that. <laughs> And th- and also, I do realize my message sounds slightly crazy. I'm sorry about that. Followed by a <laughs> frowny face. But I'm a crazy person. Oh, God. Wow. And the best part is, he just wanted to say, hey, I really like your stuff. 
And that was the important thing? Yes, yeah, that's what he it. actually really wanted to say, was, I like your videos, they mean a lot to me. My thanks carries a lot of weight. It must be done over the phone. I will find you. Yeah. It is imperative that we have a direct conversation. I have every address you've ever lived at. Oh my god. Jesus. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, but it was like, I didn't know if it was this guy on Twitter or not, because the YouTube account he sent the, the message to me with, was like some entirely different account, but after like doing an hour of looking around, I was able to link it to him. So then, ironic has tweeted to that about him. Then he felt so sorry, and then he started backpedaling, and then uh, he sent me a second message. <laughs> he backpedaled all the way to the Ukraine, man. Mm-hmm. So at least he was harmless, I guess. Yeah. Just really dumb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thankfully, he did tell me how he figured out all my info, and it was something really dumb, so I was able to get rid of that, so now nobody can find my info. Yay. Yeah, I hope that never happens again. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Also, the guy really, really wanted to be a gaming journalist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really I guess he's got the investigative part down. <laughs> yeah. Really why wants to write for Polygon. Polygon? Probably the only person to really want to write for Polygon. What is Polygon? They broke... It's like a separate thing, but it used to be a part of The Verge, which was just a news site. Hmm. Um, now it's like its own separate site. And... That took forever a, to exist. Yeah. They were hyping it up for so long, it took so long for it to exist, and they like made a documentary about how they were gonna how they were changing the gaming journalist before it launched. Yeah, before it launched. <laughs> like huge blowhards and oh my god. Also their website design kinda sucks. It's like white it's like web five point but it's like really hard to read if you're not reading it on an iPad. I hate it. Ugh. So there's that. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. Fun stuff. So yeah, goat masturbation. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, uh, goat so we'll uh, probably call this podcast as goat masturbation. Anything else, fellas? Oh, uh, um, everybody, go talk to your family. They miss you. Mhm. Mm it is the holiday season. Get your family something. Yeah. Give them a call. And because it's the holiday season, it means Steam sales. <gasps> oh yeah. The Steam sales have started kind of early this time. Went, it's not yeah. the usual Christmas sales. It's kind of like. Fall Thanksgiving. I went sales. away for well, like like I mentioned before, I, I went away for Thanksgiving. I come back today. I got two Steam presents. What'd you get? So thank you to the guy who got me, uh, well, person, excuse me, who got me uh, Knights of the Old Republic two, and also thank you to the person who got me uh, Hotline Miami. I've heard very right. good things. You're welcome, Ironicus. I've been looking through some of the sales. There are some appealing games on there. Like the uh, the Walking Dead, which I've not played yet, but I'll probably pick up at some point. People have been saying that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I've heard good things. I watched season two of the show recently. Kind of got me to want to get the game as well. Hmm. So wait, the the Walking Dead game is like really episodic, and they keep coming out with like new episodes. It's five episodes. There are five episodes total. They've all been released. They're, at this they're point. done now. They're finished. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So are they selling them in like a full series bundle now? Yeah, it's like 15 bucks right now or something. Oh, on sale. that's, that's might, actually really good. Yeah, I think the entire time was like if you... I think it was originally like 25 bucks and that got you like a season pass for oh. all of them, but you could pay the same amount and download all the episodes right. yeah. now. Yeah. There's Torchlight 2 that's available, slashed <laughs> off. That's all I have to that's say about that. that. Lots of other things. Mm. I played the first Torchlight. I kind of liked it. The first second one has multiplayer. It could be kind of fun. I'm just looking at Steam right now. Got the Mass Effect games. Both Last games thing like six I bucks played each. on Steam, I finished V V V V V V before I left on Wednesday. I think I might have actually finished it on Tuesday. That was fun. That was, Very fun. Yeah. And uh, oh, uh, I guess I, you can't have a episode without finding Isaac talk. Uh, oh, right. It took 36 hours, but I beat uh, the whole game for the first time. You beat the chest. I, I opened up that chest. Uh, what power-ups did you have that let you beat the chest? Oh, I can't remember. I know you used Kane, but I did not make a note of what I actually had running. That'll be a cliffhanger for next time. Mm. Is that embarrassing that it took 36 hours? It took 24 to beat Mom the first time. I so. played the game longer than that. I haven't beat the chest. 
I came close, but didn't make it. I've only played Binding of Isaac for 90 minutes, somehow. Darksiders 2 was on sale recently, but I mm. don't know if that's good or not. I like Darksiders 1 a lot. Then go for it, man. I don't know. I'm too busy trying to let's play Mario Galaxy 2, even though I haven't started the thread for it yet. Do it. It'll come soon. Very soon. So says the goat man. So says we all? Wii U. Including, including the goat masturbators? Get the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into that. Your goat will appreciate it. Your yeah. goat will appreciate it. The goat can hold the pad. Can create platforms for you. The feds are back after me. Uh-oh. I swear it was a joke. Well, are, are you guys feeling good? Did we, did we cover it all? I um, think this is all right. Yeah. I feel pretty good. Are, are we okay? I think so. Do we need to talk? Mm, okay. Night, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Depending on when you listen to this. Mm.